Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 538. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about new financial ETFs that pay you to invest your money. Now, this sounds completely crazy. And when I saw this article, I thought, oh dear, this is not a good trend in the financial industry. But here's what's been going on. ETFs came out really now 26 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long. But as you know, ETFs are index investments and they have very low fees. Prior to that, we had mutual funds, which were actively managed by professional managers, and they had relatively high fees. It wasn't uncommon to pay 3% or more for a mutual fund. And also mutual funds had fees to get into the mutual fund. So you had front end loads or sometimes back end loads. These are commissions that you would pay just to buy the mutual fund. Way back in the day, when I started in the industry, mutual funds actually charged an 8% fee in order to give you the privilege to be able to invest in their fund. Nowadays, fees have gotten to almost zero, with Vanguard being the low-cost provider and the majority of ETF assets going to Vanguard. So they have these trillions of dollars in assets because people have sought out the lowest cost provider. After all, if an investment becomes a commodity and there's no difference between one or another, you're going to seek the one that has the lowest fees. And that's exactly what people have done. But now (laughs) we have a different situation. So just a couple of months ago, we had a new breakthrough and that was an ETF that charged zero fees. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of the background and the history about that, and then we're gonna talk about what just was announced today, which is an ETF that's going to pay you to invest in it. So let me give you the background on SoFi. SoFi stands for Society Financial, and back on February 27th, they announced they were going to have free ETFs at least until March of 2020, there would be no fees charged. So here's the article. It says US-based FinTech SoFi has completed a regulatory filing for a series of exchange-traded funds or ETFs, some of which will come at no charge for investors, according to Bloomberg. SoFi launched two index ETFs with no management fees, in addition to two others, which will charge an undisclosed fee. The new ETFs use indexes created by Solactive, Insexress, and Title Growth Consultants. SoFi initially focused on student loan refinancing, but it has been expanding its services. It moved into deposits in 2018 and recently launched SoFi Invest to offer both active and automated investing options at no fees. Here's what this launch means for SoFi and the ETF industry. SoFi will likely be able to lure investors with free ETF offerings. The funds will be free until at least March 2020, after which SoFi may charge a fee of 0.19%. It's not clear if SoFi will actually add charges to its ETF after this date, per CNBC. Initially, offering a free service can help SoFi scale its newly introduced investment business and could potentially allow it to add more funds with a fee, in addition to its core free ones. Moreover, SoFi targets a younger demographic, many of whom have never invested before and are keen to try out no-fee products. The next bullet point says, cheap investment services are in high demand. Fidelity launched a free index mutual fund service in August 2018 and already pulled in $2.1 billion in assets per CNBC. Additionally, over 97% 
of cash flowing into ETFs is going to those that charge $2 or less for every $1,000 invested, meaning the race to offering the lowest cost services is tight. BlackRock, State Street Corp, and Charles Schwab, which together control 60% of the $3.7 trillion ETF market in the U.S., charge customers 30 cents per every $1,000 invested for their cheapest ETFs. We have seen investment companies waive fees for ETFs before, but not for a long period of time, making SoFi's offering an industry first, per ETF.com. The freemium space is heating up, and incumbents should take a close look at the development. We've seen a number of fintechs launching investment services for free for a certain period or until a specific investment threshold. This will be particularly beneficial in helping to lure millennials who often can't afford to spend a lot of money on wealth management, but are expected to control as much as $20 trillion in assets globally by 2030, according to CB Insights. As such, we expect that initial interest in SoFi's service will be high. However, the fintech might have to lower its price after March 2020 to compete with the lowest fees in the industry. And to prevent losing market share to fintechs like SoFi, incumbents should pay attention to how their freemium models pan out and roll out similar options if they're successful. End of article. All right, do you hear what is going on? This is a race to the bottom of fees. Basically, if you are an asset manager and you're not charging anyone to manage their assets, how are you going to stay in business? How are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to pay the service people that are on the phone helping people that have service issues? How are you going to take care of the human employees that you have if you don't have income coming in the door? After all, these are not automated companies. They're not artificial intelligence companies. These financial services companies are human intensive companies. They have a lot of overhead. They have payroll. They have benefits. They have expenses. They have physical buildings to pay for. How are they going to do it when they're not collecting fees? This is not a good idea to have a race to be free. And as an investor, it makes me very wary to invest in a company that doesn't charge for its services. After all, they're handling your money. Are they even going to be there in a few months? You want to be with a company who you know is going to continue to be there and service your account and take care of your account and not someone who can't afford to keep the doors open. In my opinion, it's really short-sighted to only invest in something based on fees anyway. If you're doing that, you're not looking at the big picture. And I've talked about this before, where the most important thing to an investor should be the rate of return. And you want to get the highest rate of return. I mean, look at it this way. The very, very wealthy pay fees of 20% to hedge fund managers. They're paying 20% of their earnings once they hit a certain number. Why? Because they're still netting a higher rate of return than if they didn't pay the 20% in fees. So the manager has to pay for themselves. But the manager is getting superior performance. So if you can net out their 20% fees, you're still ahead of everyone else's performance, then it's a winning situation. They have to hit a certain benchmark. So if they don't reach that benchmark, you don't pay the 20% in fees. But my point is just that the wealthy are very happy to pay extremely high fees as long as the performance is the best. And if you're outperforming everyone else net of fees, you don't really care what the fee is. It's the bottom line. It's net of fees is what makes the difference. So this race to free products is just insanity. And now we have the next level of insanity, which is having them pay you to invest there. So let's talk about this news that came out today, which was from CNBC.com, written by Kate Rooney and Eric Rosenbaum. And it says, one firm is turning up the heat on the no-fee ETF battle with negative fees. Second bullet point, Salt Financial filed the SEC Tuesday to introduce an exchange-traded fund that will temporarily pay people to invest. And bullet point number three, 
the ETF environment is increasingly competitive as BlackRock and Vanguard continue to cut fees and new entrants like SoFi tout zero fee funds. So SoFi was who we just talked about in that previous article. And this article says, one fund is going a step further in the race to zero fee ETFs by paying investors to put money into its new exchange traded fund. Salt Financial filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission on Tuesday to introduce an ETF that will temporarily pay people to invest for at least the first year. The less than two-year-old firm already runs a $10 million ETF called the Salt High Trubetta U.S. Market ETF, symbol SLT. SALT's plan comes in an increasingly competitive ETF backdrop with thousands of options. Incumbents like BlackRock, Vanguard, and Charles Schwab have continued to slash fees, while new entrants like Social Financial, which is the lending site called SoFi, have started out at zero. This week, JP Morgan announced its lowest fee ETF yet with a 0.02% fee. BlackRock's iShares and Charles Schwab had been the lowest for broad U.S. equity exposure at 0.03% fees each, while Vanguard Group's broad U.S. market ETF charges 0.04%. SALT's rate is temporary, though, and the kickbacks are small. The firm has pledged to pay 0.05% of assets to the ETF, but only on the first $100 million under management until April 2020. For example, Investors will get 50 cents back on every $1,000 sitting in the fund. Once the fund grows to $100 million, the cash kickback will be capped and shared with buyers. Once the ETF passes that April 2020 date or crosses the $100 million level, whichever comes first, it will charge 0.29%. Salt Financial's low true beta U.S. market ETF, which would trade under the ticker LSLT, plans to track an index of about 100 low-volatility stocks. Todd Rosenbluth, head of ETF and mutual fund research at CFRA, said the fact that the SALT High True Beta U.S. market fund has attracted only $10 million since launching last May at a fee of 29 basis points, or 0.29%, helps explain the decision on the new ETF. Any ETF that can't gather $100 million or more will not show up on the screens of most investors and financial advisors or make it onto brokerage platforms. It shows the challenges they face getting more money in the door. It highlights how aggressive asset managers need to be. The bar keeps moving lower, Rosenbluth said. This can help to get them over the hump of $100 million. ETFs with fees as low as 10 basis points have recently shut down for lack of investor interest. Firms have been forced to differentiate. When SoFi came out with plans for the zero-fee ETF, I said, if you're going to crash an ETF party dominated by a handful of firms, you need to make a splash, he said. I thought zero-fee was how to make a splash, but the bar has moved even lower. Ben Johnson, director of Passive Strategies for North America and Morningstar Research Services, noted in a tweet on Tuesday that J.P. Morgan's plan to launch a core U.S. stock ETF at two basis points, or 0.02%, would save an investor with $10,000 already in a three basis point or 0.03% ETF, all of $1 a year. So I want to pause there and just say, they're just making the point that if you're already in a low cost ETF paying 0.03% a year, and they're reducing it to 0.02% a year, you're saving $1 on every $10,000 invested. It's not even worth it to change over to another platform. The article goes on to say, Salt Financial's filing indicates that the new ETF will track an index it creates, and self-indexing can save fund issuers money, which is more important when fees are low, or in this case, negative. But that also means investors are tracking an index that is not from a major index company like the S&P 500. An index can deviate from the S&P 500 by a significant amount, either outperforming or underperforming, and that deviation can be greater than the fee differential versus other funds. Investors need to have confidence they will be on the right side of that performance deviation to be confident that the lower fee is the most important factor in selecting an ETF. Investors should want to understand what they are owning. A good deal is not the same as an appropriate investment, Rosenbluth said. End of article. 
So they're making the point there at the end, if you're not investing in the S&P 500 ETF, then you can't compare apples to apples. And in this ETF where they are paying you at first to invest in their fund, they are not tracking the S&P 500. They are creating their own index. We don't know what stocks are in that index. All they say is that it's low volatility. We don't know that those are good performing stocks. We don't know what their past track record is. You see, when you are proposing a new investment, this new ETF that they're going to be tracking. We don't know what it's called. We don't know what it's following. All we know is it's low volatility. So if they put together a low volatility ETF, what we need to see is the track record going back in time. If you had that available for the last 20 years, how would it have performed compared to the S&P 500? Because if you don't have that and you're going with this new fund trusting that somehow it's going to perform well going forward, well, you have nothing to base that on. And even though it didn't exist 20 years ago, at least you can make an apples to apples comparison over how this investment would have done if you had invested in it 20 years ago versus the S&P 500. Because if it performed terribly, let's say the S&P 500 was up 10% on average over the longer term, and this investment was up only 5%, then it doesn't make sense to save a few dollars to have half the performance. So while we can't guarantee future returns and past performance is no guarantee of future results, it's the only thing you have to compare apples to apples is what's called a hypothetical, to look back on a hypothetical 20 years in the past to see how this new investment would have performed and thereby getting some gauge whether it even has a chance of outperforming the S&P 500. So again, this is an unproven investment. We don't know what's in it. All we know is it's low volatility. That's not necessarily a good thing. Sometimes the higher volatility stocks are the high growth stocks. So if you have low volatility, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is a better fund or that it's going to perform better. We need more information. And so I'm going to say making a decision just to save a few dollars, or in this case, have them pay you a couple of dollars on a $10,000 investment isn't worth it to me. And also I don't want to invest in a company that may not be there in the future because their business model isn't sustainable. It reminds me back in the day when all those internet companies were going public and they had no earnings and no prospect of earnings. There was just no way that they could ever become profitable. And yet people bought their stock and invested in them and then lost their money. And while I can't say what will happen to this company, I can say, I don't like a business model that can't support the physical structure that they're in, that can't support people supporting customer service. That is not where I want to put my money. So this is a very dangerous precedent that's being set, not only to go to zero fees, but to go to a model where you're getting paid to put your money there. To me, it's got red flags all over it. I don't recommend it, but it's your money. You make the decision where you want to invest. I just wanted to bring you this news today because I was utterly astounded when I read this article. Not just astounded, I was really shocked because having been in the industry for so long, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of gimmicks. I've never seen this. This is a move out of desperation that is not smart. They might get some people that migrate over there just to save a few bucks. But again, I think that's very short-sighted. Those might be beginning investors who don't really realize what's going on. Anyone who is savvy and understands business models and what keeps businesses in business is not gonna put their money over there or will not wanna go anywhere near this situation. This is not a good idea. So there, I gave you my opinion on it. I feel really strongly about this and had to come on and report this to you and let you know what this is all about because this is very, very shocking in my view. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. 
And don't forget, we have a review contest going on where you can win 25 prizes and your chances of winning are really good. We have 11 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. We have 11 of my Wealth Heiress books that I'll personalize for you. And we have three wealth mentoring sessions with me valued at $500. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on iTunes That'll get your name in the drawing five times. Leave a book review on Amazon. That will get your name in the drawing seven times. And if you do both, that gets your name in the drawing 10 times. Winners will be announced after the end of this month. And don't forget, we have a survey with 10 quick questions asking your opinion of what topics you'd like me to talk about so I can tailor make podcasts just for you and just for our audience here. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.